Welcome back to part three of this basketball simulation iOS app tutorial. And let's get right back to building this. The last thing we built in the previous episode was the team class and the related functions that go with constructing a basketball team. So that was the rosters, the team name, and all the other variables. So in the meantime, I've also added some designs to the UI so we can actually better see what we're about to build in this one. Um, we're going to be working on the game class or how exactly a basketball game is going to work. So as I rebuild the app here, you see we can have um, we can pick a random team for both team one and two. And there's a play game button at the bottom. So let me set it up. We have the L.A. Clippers versus the Toronto Raptors. Oh, that game actually happened last week. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, and you see here on the bottom, we have the rosters with all the players. So when we click play game, what do we see here currently? Let me clear the con. Okay. Yep. So we get Hawks versus Pacers. But since we don't have anything built, um, that's all we see now. So that's going to be our main objective for this video. So as we're progressing to now work on the game function, it's important to note just how applicable this type of design goes into software, even if it's not an iOS app. For any kind of program, you want to build your things incrementally, step by step, starting from the smallest or the simplest bits, and then you just grow from there. So this kind of building that I hope that you're able to take away if you're not just building a basketball or an iOS app. Like, I hope that gets gets across. All right, enough of this intro. Let's get right to it. So I'm gonna open up this game functions .swift file, and I'm gonna get us immediately start writing things variables that we're gonna be using. So of course we want to keep track of the teams that are participating, and also let's keep track of the box score in case we want to record the stats for each of the players. For now we'll just record the points that are scored. Um, let's have that variable and let's also keep the final score for both team one and team two and these will be integers um, And I'm just going to initialize this function here and Because the box scores for both team one and team two are dictionaries We're gonna want to make sure that we map all of our player names to this dictionary and just set it to zero so that we can um add those points later afterwards after the game is finished. So I'm just going to finish writing that. So we have our teams. So how are we going to run this game? If we look at how the NBA tracks possessions for each team, we could probably figure out the answer. Possessions are how many times the team has the ball during a game. And most NBA teams have at least 100 possessions of the ball per game. So we can use that as a metric for our app. So how will we use it? Basically, we can say that every time you have a possession, you have a chance of scoring or not scoring. So to keep it simple, let's just calculate those two probabilities here. So if we have this play possession function, what if we take a random number in the range between team one's offense and another random number in the range of between zero and team two's defense? And then every time we calculate these random values, if teams one's offense is greater than team two's defense, we can record that as a score. So basically, that'll mean that that team scored on that possession. And if not, just return zero. So they didn't score. If we do that about 100 times to account for how many possessions there are in a basketball game, we can say that let's run 100 possessions for team one and then 100 possessions for team two. So that way, taking those random values into account, we can sort of pseudo simulate how an NBA game will go. So I just made this print statement and I'm about to run our app to test it out. But first I have to add our game to our main view controller file.
So while I'm editing this video, I realized this error that I encountered and it's of the type that I usually leave out of the video, but I thought I'd leave it in to show more of how typical like it is when you write code or when you're trying to build software. There's a lot of bugs that you encounter that takes a really long time and it's not picture perfect. You're not gonna like know everything right from the start. So here, what I failed to realize is I'm trying to use the teams that um, I just created as part of the game object. But what, what you're going to see shortly is I forgot that in the initialization method, it expects a roster of players and an initial value for offense and defense. And I just initialized these teams. I didn't even initialize them here. Um, you actually need the parentheses. And um, I'm going to show you later that. Whenever you have an initialization method, you have to follow that method signature when you're creating an object. So hopefully that makes sense shortly. <laughs> Okay, everything looks good. Let's build the app. And now we're going to pick some random teams. So who are we going to have now? The Grizzlies versus, sorry, just going to look at that roster make sure everything's still good. We still have our random players in our roster. I'm going to um, zoom out a bit so everything's a little more visible or easy, it's easier to read. The Grizzlies versus the Bucks. So let me, when I click play game, you see here, yep, we have the final score. Grizzlies 92, Bucks 100. Um, yep, and just to show that we did run this game and with the same teams, I'm just gonna play like, so I'm just gonna press the button again. We have a different game, different result, different game, different result here. So yep, we are running different games each time and um, okay, the Grizzlies won some games back too. So, yep, everything works as expected here. So this is great. Even though we simplified a lot of the features we've used in all of our classes, this is still really close to how like a basketball game result will look like. But we're missing one pretty big thing. We don't really have any player stats, at least the points. We don't know who's scoring all these points because technically... No player is scoring these points. Only the average of the team's offense and defense is being used. So let's try to find some way to modify our play possession function to incorporate each of our players and hopefully end up with a box score that's representative of each player's impact on the game. So instead of picking a random value for our team's offense and defensive ratings, let's pick a random player from each roster and use their offensive and defensive ratings to compare against to uh, guess butt heads. <laughs> so this is kind of like how an NBA possession would work if you think about it. Like at any given time, any player could have a chance to score. Of course, some players shoot more than others, and that's something that we're simplifying here for the sake of this um for the sake of this simulation here. So just like with the teams, we're going to compare player one's offensive score to player two's defensive rating. And if player one's offense is higher, not only are we going to add that to the team's final score, we're also going to, up to um, add that score to the player one's box score. And yep, that sounds good in theory, but we also have to make sure we modify our method signature now because a potential problem that can arise is we're adding to the wrong box score. So um, remember we in the class initialization, we have two box scores for each one for each team. So to know which box score we're referring to, we should add an additional parameter called I guess box score. And we're just going to do a simple conditional check after a potential score has happened. Um, and we're going to check to see which box score we should add it to, either Team 1's or Team 2's.
And now here, I'm just adding some additional print statements so that we can see all of our players' individual stats and um, just printing them out in a neat fashion. So, yep. Okay, I think we're ready to build the app now to see the results of what we've added thus far. So, yep, I'm gonna run it again and we're gonna get some new random teams to test this on. So we're gonna go with the Oklahoma City Thunder, check the rosters, everything looks good, versus the New York Knicks. I can't remember the last time the Knicks actually won this matchup. But let's play the game here. And yep, we've got our box score here. And it's funny, it looking at the box score, it looks like there are players on each side that didn't score at all. Uh, yep, the Thunder has two, t two players that scored zero points, and the Knicks have three. So let's try to reason that out. I think I have a feeling why, and I wonder if you can guess that as well. Here, uh, Freeman scored 36 points. And looking at his stats, it makes sense because he's very offensively gifted. <laughs> his stats lean much more towards offense than defense. And that, again, will explain why there are some players that scored zero points. Be because when they are randomly generated, their defensive scores lean much more heavily compared to their offensive scores. So here for Colton, he has a 94 defensive or 96 defensive score and a four offensive rating so yeah he's probably not ever going to score <laughs> but yeah um everything here looks good and i mean of course uh when we're randomizing our players we definitely don't i don't think there are that many players in the nba that will score zero points all the time so that will take some fine tuning, but yep, basically this part is pretty much wrapped up and everything here looks good. So we can progress from here into building our actual full league in the next episode. And this is really exciting because we're getting closer to the point where we can actually make this our own app. After we get past simulating typical basketball, we can get right into building it as an RPG, maybe adding some really fun modes or just... I don't know, just breathing some life into it. So thanks for watching this part and stay tuned for the next episode.